What's going on, buddy? Salute here. And today we are looking at the Monkseys 19 Speed GR Timber Wash PUJ build. This is a very, very strong and very fast build. And we're going to be going over everything you need to know to do what I'm doing right now in the gameplay. As it's like I'm speeding 110 in like two and a half, three minutes. So I'm going to show you how to do this and what kind of stats and what kind of gear we need for this. So some of the basics, we get a lot of damage from our weapons. We have Rune Kim Lao, we have Vengeful Wind. Uh, this gives a lot of damage and they are very, very strong. We also have the Caesar's Momentum Braces, which gives us a very, very high damage as well for Timber's Rush. And then of course, we have the Balance in our cube, which gives 600% more damage for Timber's Rush. And also gives you 100% crit chance uh, on one target. So for instance, for a Rift Gun, it's very, very strong. This is also a very, very tanky build, so there is no toughness issues at all. Very easy, very fun to play as well. Now we're going to be going over every single piece of gear and the stat priorities for them. For the weapons, the most important things are actually the secondaries, especially for the Wun Kim Lao. Uh, your secondaries, when you hit with Tempest Wash and um, Cyclone Strike, both skills deals up to 600 increased damage. The Cyclone Strike doesn't really matter a whole lot, but the Tempest Wash 600% damage multiplier is insane, so you want to get a really high secondary for this one. Since your Super Wind actually does a decent amount of damage for this build, a high secondary or Winterful Wind is also pretty nice. It's not the main factor, you have other stats that are more important. And those stats would, for instance, be percent damage and cooldown reduction. You could also argue for, you know, getting some decks or some resource cross reduction. Those stats are good, but again, secondaries are very, very strong. We are, of course, using the five piece of Pattern of Justice and two piece of Caps and Crimsons. And then we have the Ring of Royal Grandeur in our cube, so we gain the full effect of both sets. So the Captain Crimson is pretty straightforward, you gain lots of cooldown, you gain lots of resource production, and you also gain toughness and damage equal to those stats. So it's very, very strong and only requires two pieces. Now the Patterns of Justice set is the nearest monk set in the game. So a Sweeper Wing gains the effect of every rune. That's pretty nice, right? Um, and you also get increased movement speed for every stack. So when you have your Winchful Wind, you have 13 stacks total which means that you have 5% times 13. So you get a lot of movement speed, which makes this a very, very fast build as well. As you see in the gameplay, I'm running super quick for like a speed TR. It's very, very quick. It looks like a T16, right? Now the four set, um, attacking with Timber Wash reduces your damage taking. That's a pretty good damage reduction, very standard, and also increases spirit regen by 50. So you get 50 spirit regen per second. That's a lot. That means that we don't really have to care a whole lot about how we get our spirit. Because that kind of gives us everything we need, right? So the six piece, when you hit with Timber's Wash while Sweeping Wind is active, you increase the size of Sweeping Wind and you increase all damage by 15,000%, right? So you can see when you have a multiply like this 15,000, then you have your Wun Kim Lao that's like 600, you have your Caesar's Memento that's another 800, and you also have Balance that's another 600. You have so many multipliers that like stack on top of each other. That's why this build is so powerful. So for the wings, I'm using Obsidian with the Zodiac, uh, and this you want crit, cooldown, resource construction, you want to move the attack speed, the other stats are more important, and also allows you to use it for other builds like this one, Roku, GR, uh, push build. But then again, the stats on this one doesn't matter a whole lot, we only use it because it reduces the cooldown of our spells. So for instance, our Epiphany gets reduced by the Obsidian with the Zodiac, which means that we have 100% uptime of our Epiphany, which gives us very, very big damage reduction, right? We're also using Unity here, where we have Crit Crit and of course the Elite Damage. You don't have to have it Primal or Crit Crit. This is only because we want Unity here, and then Unity on our Templar, which is another 50% damage reduction, which you don't really need, but it would ties really well into our Squirt Snake list. We'll get to back to that in a little bit. On the gloves, it's pretty standard. You want a Dexterity Crit Crit Cooldown. And on your shoulders, you want a very standard as well, so like Dex, Vid, all resistance and cooldown as well. You don't need stuff like area damage, which doesn't really help a lot with speed. So something like this is more than, than fine. Now your helmet is a bit more difficult to get. You want a dexterity, crit and tempest wash. But again, it's pretty difficult to roll these stats. And of course you'd want the tempest wash maxed out and the crit as six as well. And ancient, of course, right? Chest is very basic. Dex, vid, all rest, then you're good to go. Now for your belt, using Captain Crimson's, you want ideally dex, vid, percent life and always i have armor here always would be better but again it's it's all right now for your pants you would normally want the pattern of justice pants and then have the captain crimson's boots but again if you manage to make them uh as the pants that's fine but you would ideally want to swap them around so on your pants you would want 
Dex, Vid, and Always, and you would want them to be the Path of Justice Pants. Loots are very standard. Dex, Vid, Always, and Tempest Wash. And having Tempest Wash as your main priority here and on your helmet, of course. Now for necklace, we're using Squirt's Necklace. So while not taking damage, our damage dealt is increased by 100%. So we need to find a way to make sure that we have this buff. And that is, for instance, where the Molten Wildebeest Gizzard Gem comes in. So you can see, after not taking damage for 4 seconds, we gain Absorb Shield for 200% of your total life per second, which means that you usually get a shield for about 300,000, which is pretty strong. But if you have this and your stat priorities are messed up, this 300,000 shield will be very weak, so you need other things. You need a lot of all resistance. You need stuff that helps the shield, because Vitality doesn't matter at all. You just need a lot of always and you need a lot of damage reduction. So for instance, your Unity also helps a lot with keeping your Scourge time up. And of course, on your Scourge, we want Cold Crit Crit, since Cold is our main damage source, because that's the rune we use on our Flurry. We want Cold and then Crit Crit for max damage. Now for the braces, we're using Caesar's Memento. This is one of the hardest items in the game to get with good stats. So you can see here, the most important thing on it is the secondary. You have between 600 to 800. And if you have an item that's below 650, it's bad. So you need 750 plus, and of course you want as high as you can. So mine here is secondary 792, which is really good. But I had to then sacrifice some crit chance. I only have 4.5. That's like the lowest roll you can get. So I sacrificed quite a bit of crit chance to have a high secondary, but that's worth it. And of course, on your braces, you want a high secondary, and then you want cold damage again, and you want crit chance, and then like dex, and then vid, or always. Now, if you can't find a good season momentum, hold on, I will show you what else we can do to negate this fact, and then we can use it still. Now for the skills, we are using Epiphany with this as route. This is mainly just to give us spirit region, but also a 50% damage reduction, which is very big. And you also have Mantra or Conviction. The damage is fine, but we also mainly go for the Annihilation rune, which gives us 30% movement speed at all times. Now here we're using Dashing Strike, Blinding Speed. This is again, you know, Dashing Strike for getting around the map. And then Blinding Speed is for increased uh, dodge chance, which again is a large damage reduction. So keep this buff up. Now here we're using Streaming Wind. The two set of the Path of Justice actually give us every rune after Streaming Wind. But you still want to make sure you pick the cold one because you're using cold as our main damage and Street Wind actually does quite a bit of damage so make sure to pick the cold one for it. We're using a Cyclone Strike here with Wall of Wind. It doesn't do any damage but it pulls enemies in and freezes them which then proc your season memento that, so that's really really nice. And of course the main star of the build we have Tempest Rush and we are using Flurry which is the cold rune. This is a stacking buff that goes up to 100. And since you get 90 per stack, you can get a very, very big explosion. But for this build, don't really care too much about stacking it. Uh, like 20 stacks is more than enough to kill a pack. As you see in the gameplay, I don't worry about too much about my stacks on when I use it. I usually just pop it on like 10 or 15 on elite. It doesn't really matter a whole lot. You don't need to stack it to any specific amount. It always stacks constantly. Now for the passive, we are using Seized Initiative. Dealing damage to enemies above 75% life increases your attack speed by 30% for 4 seconds. This is just a stable buff, you have it constantly. Very very strong, gives you a lot of attack speed with gives damage. We are using Harmony. 40% of your single elemental resistances from item instead increases your resistance to all elements. So for instance, if you have an item, let's say my pants here have a secondary of 195 uh, fire resistance. 40% of that will now become um, always instead, so it's very very strong. This gives you a lot of always, which then makes your squirt snake this even stronger. You have more uptime of it, which means more damage, so very very powerful. We are using Relentless Assault. You deal 20% more damage to enemies that are blind, frozen or stunned. And since we freeze enemies constantly with our Cyclone Strike Wall of the Wind, this procs constantly, so we have 20% more multiplicative damage. And for the final one, we are using momentum. Moving 25 yards increase your damage by 20% for 6 seconds. Again, this is just a stable, constant buff you have all the time. Now for the cube, we are of course using the balance, which increases your temperature rush damage by 600% constantly. And it also gains you 100% crit chance on 
enemies when there are three or less. So on Rift Guardians, you have 100% crit hit chance. That's very, very strong, which makes it so your Tempestors always will crit, especially if in Flurry. You know, when you go and you pop it, it will always crit, which is very, very powerful. In the armor slot, we're using Mantle of Channeling. Um, this is just a straight up damage reduction and damage increase, but we can change this out and I'll be showing you a few alternatives later as to what we can use here instead. So hang on for that one. And of course, in our ring slot, we have the ring of royal grandeur, which reduces the number of items needed for set bonuses by one, which makes it so we can have both the patterns of justice and captain crimson set. Very, very powerful to need this. Now for linder gems, we're using bane of the trap. This is just a straight up damage multiplier. Get it as high as you can, very, very powerful. And of course, using Taeguk, this works really well with channel spells. So, if, when we use Tempest Watch here, we gain lots of damage, but also a lot of damage reduction from Taeguk. So definitely go ahead and get that and get as high as you can as well for more damage from it. And as I showed before, we are using Molten Willoughby Skizzard. This is a, a big shield that, that allows you to have a higher scrutz of time. So, it's not really a damage reduction gem, it's more actually a damage increase gem because it then allows you for more script sub time. So it's very, very powerful and you want to make sure you get as high as you can as well in terms of level. Minus only 120, ideally you would want to get as higher and higher as you can because then the shield will become stronger and stronger. Now there's a few other alternative playstyles you can play. For instance, you can play with Tempest Rush and then have the Lightning Rune instead which gives you a more consistent damage. It's slower for sure, but it's more consistent. So if you don't want to deal with the flurry stacks and how to proc them and thing, you can run the lightning rune here. There's more consistent damage. And of course also, you know, adjust accordingly in terms of your bracers and your scrolls for lightning if you want to. Now, as I said before, the Caesar's Memento is very, very important and you need a very, very high secondary on it. But if that is very difficult for you to find, there is a thing you can do for it. Let me show you. So what you want to do is you want to remove your metal of channeling and put in the Caesar's Memento here because then the secondary is always 800. So if you're having a rough time finding 800 one, you can of course do it here. You will then be losing out on your metal of channeling, but that is decent. If, if you can't find a high secondary, you would want to have it here just so you get as, as close to 800 as you can. And then of course in your braces slot you could have like an emesis braces instead because that's usually very easy to find now another thing we can also change is our mantra i'm using the damage and movement speed mantra here you could swap this out for the mantra of salvation with agility this gives you a big damage reduction again as gives you a lot of always and also some dodge chance which makes you sort of get even more scripts up time so if you're running through your rift and you're having a hard time creeping up your skirts for, you know, killing packs and stuff, definitely use Mantra of Salvation with agility here. It's very, very powerful. And then later on, as your gear gets better and you get more all resistance and stuff, then you can swap over to the other rune, which is more movement speed, more damage. But if you need this damage reduction here, go for it. So to recap on the gear, as a whole, you want, for instance, percent damage and cooldown on weapons. You want a high secondary or season memento. You want to keep your skirt sub time to 90% on the higher throughout the entire rift, especially on packs and stuff. Use your observatory zodiac to reduce your epiphany cooldown, so you have more uptime of it, which means more damage reduction. Now in terms of the playstyle, as you can see in the gameplay behind me, it's a very very standard playstyle. What you want to do is just, you just want to charge around with your dash. It doesn't really matter a whole lot how many stacks you have. Don't be afraid to use your dash just to get around because you don't need more than 10 or 15 stacks to kill an elite anyways. Keep up your buffs, so first is keep up your epiphany and your mantra, depends on which one you pick. Uh, just keep the buffs up and you'll be good to go on that front. And as I said before, in terms of the Tempest Rush with the Flurry stacks, you don't need to stack a whole lot. 10 or 15 stacks usually does it, especially if you have your Scourge of Time up, which gives you 100% increased damage, so that works out really well for you. And just so you know, I only have about 30 hours playtime on this monk, and so I have a lot of Augments, I have a lot of Paragon, but only 30 hours, which means that my gear is very, very suboptimal. So you can definitely do something like I'm doing now if you make this build. Just with the basics, I believe you could do at least 100 immediately, even at 600 Paragon. So definitely try this build out. It's very, very powerful. It's very fun. And it's also very relaxing. You can play it as well, just like watching Netflix or anything like that. I hope you enjoyed this guide. Leave a like if you did, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out, folks.